Vietnam. Yes. You know, Golan Heights. Right. This country, we almost went to war with Uganda because of a piece of rock called Migingo, which is half an acre. So land is an issue that you don't take lightly. In the constitution, there are four critical issues I want to mention. Article 43A of the draft constitution removes any constitutional protection from property called land. That is on the Bill of Rights. The right to your property is protected except if that property is land. What are you telling the middle class like Jeff who want to buy a flat, they want to buy a house, they want to invest in property. You're telling them their investment in property, whether they are buying a house or they are buying an office or they are buying a, 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 a plot to build a factory, has no constitutional protection. That's one. And I want Kenyans to read. We are not talking here stories. Number two, the constitution now provides for a monster called the National Land Commission which is no different from the Commission of Lands. The mismanagement of land in this country, especially in Rift Valley and Coast, has been because decisions have been made at the center without the involvement of people at the grassroots. And you end up with a person with a title deed because he can access corridors of power in Nairobi with a title deed and going to look for the land because he doesn't know where it is. It's called land grabbing. Call it land grabbing, calling whatever you want to call it, but that's what's going on, and that's what is going to be perpetuated by this constitution. Number three, which is much more serious, the constitution now provides for uh, section 67.2e says the National Land Commission, on its own initiative or through a complaint, will now begin to look at ancestral land injustices. My brother Jeff, to me, we are taking this country the wrong direction. Because in Rift Valley, for example, if you begin to talk about who lived where, whose land is ancestrally whose, for example, the whole of Kitale, the Luyas, the Kisis, many of the Kalenji subtribes who are there today will have to move out because that land ancestrally belong to the Pokot, the Cherangani, the Sengwer, and the Sabaut. Oh, but that's a little extreme, where she It is not extreme, it is in the Constitution. I will challenge you to go and read it. That's it. What will happen to the land clashes that we have had all these years in the Rift Valley? You are actually giving it now constitutional uh, recognition that these people have genuinely been fighting over land which is ancestrally theirs. What will happen with the fights in, uh, in, in Kayabombo, in, 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 in Mombasa? What are we doing to our country through the Constitution? Because some non-governmental organizations sneaked these kind of provisions into the Constitution. And people already, I challenge you, two weeks ago in the Standard, Maasai were already claiming Nyachaya's land in Narok. They were telling him, this is our ancestral land, pack and leave. Do we really want to go that direction? The same National Land Commission, the Constitution says, we are now going to take private land. I'm talking private land. And uh, uh, prescribe minimum and maximum land acreages. And, and, I, and I, I, want, I just want you to understand what it means. Yeah. Already the government, when Amos Kimunya was Minister for Lands, say the minimum land acreages in arable land should be two and a half acres. I want to tell you as minister for Agri uh, former minister for agriculture that 90% of tea is grown by small scale farmers on one acre and less. What are you telling those farmers? Okay, but let me ask you this. No, no. I mean, I mean, what are you telling those farmers? That the minimum acreage they can have is two and a half acres. No, it doesn't what, say that. that that's exactly what it says. Go and read, Jeff. Look, don't hear stories. But. Go and read. But that clause that is that for is, people with thousands, and you know there's tens of thousands of acres, and they're doing nothing with it. That, 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 that is a lie. That is a lie that the public is being told. 
you are being told about the maximum, you are not being told about the minimum. But how many Kenyans own land, Mwashimiwa? Millions of Kenyans own land less than two and a half acres. It's only thousands of Kenyans who may be owning land more than a thousand acres. For the record, I don't have a thousand acres. How much do you have? I have a hundred acres which I bought. Are we together? We're together. <laughs> so, let me tell you, the constitution on the land chapter is going to create a crisis in this country of an imaginable scale. This same constitution says now land is going to be taxed. Mm -hmm. Yeah? It's going to be taxed. Majority, 80% of poor people live in the rural areas on land. Those poor guys, they are the ones who own a piece of acre, one acre, five acres, three acres, two acres. If you are going to put tax on land, on, 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 on farmers which are peasant farmers, they are already poor. You are going to tax their land and, 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 and households. How, how, where are you going to take this country? What about the people with tens of thousands of acres? Let's say the church. Well, those, ones, those, the ones, church. those ones, they can afford to pay. Big landowners. They can afford to pay. But they're not paying right now. We're just trying they, to get they, some they revenue. Can, they, they can afford to pay. But the small landowners, who is going to pay for them? How, how are they going to be taken care of? I am not bothered about the people who have a thousand acres and two thousand acres. They can go to court. They can go and pay uh, land rates. They can sell their piece of land. I am talking about because this country is being focused and cheated that it is about the big land owners. It is not about the big land owners. And if it is, the bigger problem is going to be with the small land owners. Let me say, uh, Jeff, that we are underestimating the problem that we are going to create on the land chapter. And believe you me, I do not want to be party and I do not want to be on the side of the leaders who presided over the impoverishment of other Kenyans and over creating a confusion in this country that is going to cause a total resettlement of Kenyans. And, and I do not want to be part of that bandwagon. Okay. Your Honor, that video, that interview given before the charges puts a stake through the heart of the prosecution's case. That those words from the lips of Mr. Ruto stand in clear juxtaposition to the absence of any evidence, objective evidence, by way of video or audio or telephone from the other side. And Your Honour, this was all done. The relevant period is 2007, 2008. In this day and age, everyone, there are many, many recording devices. Every conversation can appear uh, recorded somehow. Why is it that after millions and millions of dollars of international taxpayers' money, going into the OTP investigations, there is not one minute of video, not one minute of audio, in which William Ruto is said to have said, kill Kikuyus, you're no longer welcome here. Why? Is it because these thousands of hundreds of thousands of people that attended these rallies cumulatively um, haven't produced evidence? Or is it because there's no evidence to find? It's a very basic question, but one that is left unanswered by the prosecution. Your Honour, this was said before the summons. But Your Honour, one can't unfortunately rest. You heard earlier a video of Mr. Ruto in which he said, I'll go and prove my innocence. Well, that's unfortunately not how things should work. It is really for the prosecution to prove and we have to prove nothing. But he's come here and he's engaging with the court, hoping that sanity will prevail. Hoping that in this madness of injustice, a decision will be taken to realize and wake up and, and proclaim we got it wrong. But Your Honor, the prosecution may say, well, that's after the event. Maybe there was some guilt on his part. He realized you know, the plan didn't work out quite as well as it should. Maybe, you know, the scale was more than imagined, but that's actually not what they allege. But if that's what they allege, I play another video. And John, not only do I play another video, I, I play a video that my learned friend for the prosecution
played this morning. But unlike my learned friends, mine will not be a silent movie. Silent because they have no evidence in this case. I will play sound on that very video that the prosecution have looked away from, have failed to recognize, have failed to heed, and their refusal to look at that evidence and understand the consequence and the import of that evidence is occasioning a miscarriage of justice. Your Honor, a miscarriage of justice does not only arise in our respectful submission when an individual is uh, wrongfully convicted. It is actually brought, it actually arises when an innocent person is hauled through the cork, uh, over the coals when they are absolutely innocent. Your Honour, let me play a bit of the video and then I will take you to what he said in translation. If you can play the video, please, of the same rally shown in the prosecution's opening speech. Let's see it. <laughs> Your Honor, let me put the translation of those comments of William Ruto before the violence on screen. And Your Honor, I will read so the public can hear what they did not hear from the prosecution, which is the truth. The public, the international community and Kenyans will hear from this defense team the truth, not the partial analysis and the untruths that have been presented to the prosecution from, unfortunately, lying and deceitful witnesses. Your Honours, what William Ruto says, and I quote, if you are a lawyer, lawyer, don't be deceived. They say, you know, with this devolution, you will be chased out. If you have bought a farm here, whether you are from Western Province or from Pokot, or from Lamu, or from Vanga. If you have a farm here, this is your home. One moment, you say it will be on the screen. It is on the screen, Your Honor. Is it? Yes. Is the prosecution seeing it? Maybe, um... Yes, Your if Honor. The prosecution, if everyone's seeing it, that is fine. I do have a printout which I'm you grateful. handed out earlier. Thank I'm you. Grateful. Your Honor, so, and this interview takes place in the North Rift, in Eldoret, and he's telling the audience, whether you're from Western, whether you're from Pocot, whether you're from Lamu, whether you're from Vanga, wherever you're from, from Kapsabed, in Kapsabed, if you have a farm here, this is your home. Yes, it's Kapsabed. He says, do you understand me? The answer is yes. And the Constitution guarantees the rights of every Kenyan. Not every Kalenjin, as the prosecution would somehow contort his views, of every Kenyan. Do you understand me or not? 
We do, is the answer. Kenyans fighting against Kenyans is not on ODM's agenda. ODM's struggle is against poverty, unemployment, and discrimination. The answer is yes, that we have experienced in Kenya all these years. That indeed is our struggle. Do you understand or not? He prays to the audience and they say yes. They were very clear. It is a tragic shame that the prosecutor is so unclear and so confused in her understanding and appreciation of the facts that are presented not as a game, not as a ritual, a dance, an orchestrated showpiece, but are being presented as the truth to a court of law. Greater rigor, greater scrutiny and greater responsibility, we say, is what was required in this particular case. Your Honour, William Ruto continues to the people, to the people that you saw on that TV screen, other Kenyans, small communities. Therefore, don't be deceived about devolution when they claim you will be chased out. Don't be deceived when they say you will be chased out. Local governance will ensure that your children will get the same opportunities as the children of those who are in Nairobi. At the moment, you don't have opportunities. Your Honour, that's, that's the words of William Ruto. No wonder it was inconvenient for the prosecution to play it. I mean, a stake through the heart even kills Dracula, they say. But Your Honour, this is a second stake. One would hope it's enough to kill this beast that has been presented and stalks the corridors of the ICC, which is a false, concocted case. That's evidence as opposed to speculation. That is evidence as opposed to the lies of witnesses, unsupported by any objective evidence. Your Honours, the prosecution case is an old cliché. Anybody in politics, any time you bring a case, say that uh, an accused has a thirst for power. It sells well, we've seen movies, and we've seen actually leaders, despots, dictators, that do have thirst for power, that do commit terrible crimes against their people. And indeed, it's those people that this court was created as a last resort to deal with, to end impunity. Uh, Your Honour, the prosecutor uh, said today, and I quote, that the ultimate aim of Mr. Ruto uh, was to drive his political opponents from the rift by violent means, to secure personal political power, and to consolidate his vote to base in the Kenyan community. Well, Your Honour, firstly, there's no answer. Consolidate what? You already had the biggest majority in, of any person in Kenya. More votes than any other member of parliament. Consolidate what? Consolidate what? No answer. But Your Honour, it's much worse than that because the view of William Ruto is, is the opposite. I mean, it's very surprising of any leader in any community of the world to be as We say absolutely the, the, the primary consideration in his mind has always been the interests of his country. Now, Your Honour, that's easy to say, as I said, defence counsel, prosecution can say anything. But what is the record that the prosecution ignore? This person that hates Kikuyus, drives Kikuyus out, leaving aside the family and brother-in-laws and Kikuyus apparently who are doing the sound system, uh, not running for their lives when apparently they're present. Uh, when these terrible broadcasts are made. What, what does, what really inspires William Ruto? Your Honour, in 2002, every Kenyan knows William Ruto supported a Kukuyu in the form of Uhuru Kenyatta. 2002, he supports Uhuru Kenyatta. And the deputy at that time was Musalia Mudavedi. Um, Zaluya. Was he thirsting for power when he supported them in 2002? In 2007, who was he supporting? It's not made up. Anybody can do even a, a Google search right now here in the courtroom and they'll see what we say is true. 2007, he's supporting Raila Adinga, Alua, and Mudavedi, Aluya. Fighting for what? For an agricultural ministerial position? It, it makes no sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. 
And you're right, in 2012, again, he supports the presidential aspirant, as he then was, Uhuru Kenyatta. Uh, this is not a man. I mean, however you color it, however you fill in the, the sketch, this is not a man driven by ethnic hatred. This is not a man that is thirsting for power. This is a man that is putting the needs of his country first. Perhaps hear what he had to say when he wasn't a suspect. When there were no charges before the ICC. And I'll play a video dated the 6th of October 2009 in which you will hear in the words of William Ruto himself his vision of leadership and his belief that the people should decide. And your honours will see a very different picture from the caricature that the prosecution would have the world and your honours believe. Your honours, let's listen with your leave to that video. Your Honour, while... Really, I mean, any sensible Kenyan leader would want to do something about the things we said to the electorate that we want to do. Surely, if we began a year after election, begin to think about who is going to be in which camp and in bed with who, we will be doing the greatest disservice to this country. Because one, it will undermine our workings as a government, it will undermine the delivery of service of our ministries, it will undermine our personal relations as, as, as leaders in, in this government. Every politician has a plan. And every polit politician, unless those who are not serious, have ambitions of where they want to get. And everybody has a plan on how they want to get there. And I want to tell you, uh, quite frankly, that um, uh, the priority that I have at the moment as William Ruto is to do something about the mandate that I have in the Ministry of Agriculture. And there is a lot that I, 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 I want to do. I want to streamline the sugar sector, privatize, make sure that uh, by the time 2012 comes, we, can, we are as competitive as any other producer in the commercial region. I want to ensure that uh, tea farmers and coffee farmers have uh, good earnings for their crop. I want to ensure that we have adequate food in our country, and that is possible. And I want to make sure that agriculture becomes a profitable enterprise that's commercially viable and internationally competitive. That is my brief. If I will have done well at the Ministry of Agriculture, it is for Kenyans to judge. And I can then think of what can I do with a bigger office. If I will not be able to deliver with the office of the Ministry of Agriculture, what business do I have trying to scheme for a bigger office? I mean, and, I, and, I, and I, that should go for every minister. I mean, anybody who believes that they have anything to offer to this country, let them use the platform they have to demonstrate to us, the people of Kenya, that indeed in them there is something and there is value for them being in the leadership positions they have. And, and I think that should be, chat, that should inform the decisions of citizens come 2012. It shouldn't necessarily be who is in what camp. It is who can deliver what to change the lives, to add value to the lives and destiny of the people of Kenya. Okay. And, and we have a platform, each one of us, the, the people who, um, uh, who, who believe or who are believed to have a chance in 2012, they have a platform currently. Let them demonstrate to us. Yes. If you're successful in your mandate, mm. Do you want to be president? Why not? If I didn't want to be president, what would I be doing in politics? I mean, then I, I would be doing the wrong thing. And um, uh, every, uh, at least I believe that I have something to offer this country. I may have had um, very serious challenges in the past in terms of perceptions and people creating stories and uh, of course competitors trying to paint you black and many of those things. But this is not a church contest. 
You know, this is a serious, uh, brutal political contest. So I have to live with all that. But I believe that whoever has a chance to make a contribution towards making Kenya an equitable, stable, peaceful, and prosperous country, we should. I strongly believe that we can change this country. And I have a plan on how to change this country. Given an opportunity, no Kenyan will regret that they gave William Ruto a chance to make his contribution towards this, changing this country. But I am prepared to be in other positions, support other people, if they have a better plan than I do, if they have a better chance than I do, as, as a pragmatic democratic person, it, it's not only your plan that succeeds, you must appreciate. If somebody has a superior plan, give him a chance. And, and uh, let them demonstrate, let them give them a chance. That's why I'm saying, those of us who have positions at the moment, it's our time to demonstrate to the people of Kenya that we deserve a higher office by making sure that we deliver on the office that we have. Mashimua, thank you. Good luck with that plan. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Williams. Your Honour, that is the untarnished and gilded truth regarding the view of William Ruto towards power. It's actually not towards power at all, as the prosecution would have you believe. It's not about a thirst for authority. It's about service and delivery and a meritocracy in which people should be chosen by the will of the people on their merit, not conniving or scheming, as he said, for power, but discharging the responsibilities that they have been given in a democratic society that was and is the Republic of Kenya. It is a good soundbite. It will capture the imaginations of the audience. It may get some headlines even to tarnish somebody's hard work and their diligence and their reputations by saying they've got a thirst for power. It sells well. It's good copy, as they say in journalism. It doesn't make it the truth. It's not the truth in this case. This was said before the summons, before the ICC. And it is the view of William Ruto. If there was any plan that William Ruto had, it was not violence, it was not coercion, it was not killing, it was not ethnic cleansing. It was a plan for the betterment of all Kenyans. It was a plan that he was elected for three times by his own constituents in Eldoret North, a pluralistic constituency. And it's a plan that he also had a mandate from all the millions of people of Kenya by, by a massive majority in internationally acclaimed free and fair elections, even by the EU and the United States and the United Kingdom government and others. Even they were forced to accept that they were free and democratic elections. This is not a plan of a schema. It's a plan of a servant of the people. Your Honour, that uh, uh, brings me to another issue. Uh, the prosecution have said repeatedly in their pre-trial briefs and in earlier stages of proceedings that, uh, and I touched upon their attempt to create a smokescreen to hide the inadequacies of their investigation. I mentioned that at the outset. Uh, but, Your Honour, in, in, in assessing the veracity of this case, in the same way the prosecution, without any basis, would have you uh, take on board as consciousness of guilt facts that are disputed and not accepted, not proved. I would ask you to consider at every step the steps that Mr. Ruto himself has taken towards justice. It's not a small thing. It, 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 it's not a small thing at any stage. It's not a small thing when one tries to engage with the prosecution before the summons, when you knock on the door of Wacky and say, please speak to me, please take my account, because Wacky doesn't do his job properly. It, it's not a small thing when you're named and shamed just before Christmas of 2010, just before the court recess, in an international press conference. Uh, and it's uh, acutely painful 
if you're in those shoes, if any of us were in those shoes, to come before a court and have very terrible allegations leveled against you in front of your wife and your children, it's not easy. It's not easy. But the behavior and attitude of William Ruto speaks eloquently, far more eloquently than his counsel is able to on his behalf. Your Honor, it's not a joke coming to The Hague. It's a very serious step. And Your Honor, he comes with no guarantees, he never had. Before he was elected Deputy President, there were no guarantees, and he made the trip. And in a position of relative strength, as an elected part of the presidency, he has shown similar respect and adherence to the rule of international law. These are not words. Even his most ardent opponent in a moment of candor would have to admit that they speak something, even if they would no doubt twist the connotation and dispute the consequence of those actions. But Your Honor, let me play a bit of the attitude of William Ruto. Just two days before he came, I think the day before he traveled, two days before his initial hearing before this court. Uh, Your Honor, it's a, a clip from uh, Jeff Quinangi's uh, On the Bench, uh, dated the 5th of April 2011. Incidentally, Jeff Quinangi, as every Kenyan knows, is a kukuyu. But Your Honor, perhaps that's also irrelevant uh, to the prosecution. But Your Honor, let's play that particular clip with your leave. Yeah. Are you nervous going in, Moshimura? Are you nervous? Let me be very honest to you. Um, my conscience is very clear. And uh, my innocence does not need um, uh, any boosting. I, I am clear in my mind. I go there with a um, very clear conscience, knowing very well that I am innocent. And the kind of charges that have been preferred uh, against me, as I say, can only be in a movie. Hmm. Despite... Your Honor, those sentiments was not a knee-jerk reaction to a summons because those were the sentiments of William Ruto before the summons was issued. They were the sentiments that he expressed in November 2010. So you have his comments after the summons was issued and now you'll hear what he had to say on the same issue before he was named by Luis Mourinho Ocampo. is very, very clear. And I want to assume the devil. The when asked whether he played any role was a perpetrator of the chaos, Ruto's response was prompt. My conscience is very, very clear, and I want to assume the devil. The and Your Honor, on his first appearance, of course, the Kenyan press is very vigorous. It's, uh, I was told, in fact, the confirmation hearings were the most, watch, most watched event in Kenya since independence. Uh, everybody's talking about it. And all kinds of scenarios are being mentioned, uh, including whether or not there was a trap and that William Ruto would be arrested. Your Honour, hear what William Ruto had to say in relation to that prospect. It's not a light step to come to The Hague before Your Honours, but he made it in full confidence of his innocence and full confidence that the court would not be swayed by NGOs or pressure groups or political interests, but the court, Your Honours, would discharge your duties that you have been sworn to uphold, which is to do justice. Your Honour, I would wish to play uh, William Ruto's interview of the 5th of April 2011. What if they detain you, Mosham? What if they choose to? Because, you know, you can, you can never tell until you're there. 
what if they choose to detain you and they, they say, oh, he's a threat to this, he's a threat to witnesses, he's a flight threat, whatever it is. What if they detain you? Uh, well, I guess uh, anything is possible. But again, uh, we take confidence in the fact that uh, we all still believe that uh, this is supposed to be a justice system that is above board, that is based on fairness, on, on, um, on justice. And until they prove otherwise, we will take it uh, as that. Your Honour, that's the answer to the question, what happens if, you're, if they try to detain you? Your Honour, in fact, the prosecution did try to detain him. And that application was rejected because luckily this court is ruled not by the assertions and the edicts of uh, Louis Mourinho Ocampo, the then prosecutor of the ICC, but what is supreme and protects all of us, prosecution, defense and victims alike, is an independent bench. And Your Honor, that attempt, ill-judged and un unfounded that it was, was made and rejected. Your Honor, despite that risk, despite that attempt that would maybe shake anybody's confidence in what, as to what would lay in store, Mr. William Ruto attended thereafter voluntarily, even when not required, and he has attended today. Your Honor, there's no, there's all nonsense we say in relation to this consciousness of guilt. Again, it's a fig leaf to hide the naked reality that they don't have evidence in relation to the core aspects of their own case. They don't have evidence in relation to core aspects of their own case. But, Your Honor, the conduct of Mr. Ruto is the conduct of an innocent man who hopes and earnestly prays that somebody will wake up and say the case was wrongly brought. We hope the prosecution does that. Your Honor, if not, we are, we are certain that the bench in due course will do the necessary. But, Your Honor, I've uh, dealt with the land issue and the nonsense and the humbug that it is. The idea of ethnically cleansing a, a non kalenjin free zone. But we have even more in juxtaposition to the silence of the prosecution, the silent movies that they will show, and instead the poor substitutes are the witnesses that are putting forward fabricated accounts. Because what we have, Your Honours, are clear statements from William Ruto at the time, at the time, calling for peace. Your Honour, how realistic is it that the prosecution say on the one hand that William Ruto is giving speeches about ethnic hatred, about ethnic hatred, saying that nests should be burnt and non kalenjins kicked out and all this kind of inflammatory, violent, xenophobic, racist language in a public platforms and others. And yet, there's not only no evidence in the form of independent verified video, uh, independent vid videos or audio, what you do have is William Ruto calling for peace. And the prosecution had that, but somehow I, I mm. lament how it escaped them. They looked away. And Your Honor, this is a prosecution and you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. I, I accept that. And I accept the ICC OTP is 10 years old. But anybody who would contend it's perfect or it's working, or even that it's working as the drafters of the Rome Statute had anticipated, would in our respectful and regretful submission be living in cloud cuckoo land. Time and time, uh, time, and time again, in this very case, is not the defense. Independent judges have had cause to lament and regret and even admonish the prosecutor regarding the systemic failings that we say bedevil her office. I, I know it's not a, an easy job inheriting uh, the bit of a mess that she got from Ocampo, but it doesn't change the fact that it's a mess. And it's a mess, unfortunately, that's been placed on the head and at the feet of William Ruto for the defense to come in and face that nonsense. It is unfair. Your Honor, let's play 
a video of William Ruto. It's actually uh, was uh, broadcast, I believe, on the on the second of January two thousand and eight. But you're on this speech. This was made, and you'll see at the bottom, at the same time, Kiamba Church is burning. You'll, you'll see at the bottom of the screen, breaking news, Kiamba Church burning. So it's uh, around that time, if not one day later, that it was broadcast. And Your Honor, is this the words, what you're going to hear, is this the words of a man that was inciting and planning and financing the burning of a church, and was saying effectively, to hell with it. Let everything burn. I've won my office, I've won my election, but still, let everything burn because of some other reason. Your Honours will decide in due course, and I hope the prosecutor will look with an open mind at this further evidence presented by the defence for her consideration as well as Your Honours. If that can be played, please. ODM leaders led by Member of Parliament-elect William Ruto appeal to all Kenyans to remain calm and observe peace as the country continues to witness the electoral violence across the, across the country. We have said very clearly and loudly that we want a peaceful nation. We are asking Kenyans wherever they are across the country that we want to protest against what happened to us in this country, but we want to do it peacefully. We abhor any acts of violence. We ask Kenyans to shun and to avoid any acts of violence, any acts of looting, any acts of destruction of property, which is unnecessary. We are telling our people across the country that burning property, destroying life, engaging in acts of violence is, go, is actually against the democracy we are fighting for. We want every Kenyan to be heard, to participate in um, uh, freedom of association and freedom of expression, but within the limits of peace. Unambiguous words, clear words, no room for any sane person, for any fair per person, for any truthful person to doubt. Your Honours have heard that video, but Your Honour, the prosecution have heard that video too. And one of the core witnesses that they relied upon at confirmation one of the core witnesses that is on their witness list was played that video. And it's a crying shame, actually. It's a crying shame to justice. Because the prosecution swallowed his answer. He said, well, this shows William Ruto was not seeking peace. There's a code word, magic code word. I, to be honest, perhaps you got it because I certainly missed it. A magic code word that by saying any violence that is not necessary, he means some violence is necessary. Your Honour, this is a gross contortion of the English language. This is linguistic gymnastics that gave us, gave us cramp many moons ago. And yet, Your Honour, that witness, that witness's account is swallowed by the prosecution. Apparently no indigestion, but Your Honours, to the rest of us, we feel like we're suffering from food poisoning. How could that statement be taken as a call for violence when any decent and any truthful and any fair person sees it for what it is, which is a call for truth, a call for peace? Your Honour, the prosecution case is framed in that manner. The truth, the evidence, as against rumour, speculation, hidden motives, hidden coaching by people outside the OTP, hidden agendas, political agendas. Your Honours, one needs to be very careful as a, as a prosecutor and you're the 
cultures and the continents, uh, uh, the c countries and the situations that I see are very different. And the culture of Africa is not homogenous, it's very, very different. Uh, the situation in Kenya, the politics, the, the culture, the whole mosaic of, of peoples is very different from Uganda and Tanzania, never mind Sierra Leone or Liberia. That's the richness of Africa. But John, it's far too easy to get off a plane with an ICC badge and say, okay, we've got a mandate, we're going to investigate, and actually not pause with humility that all of us need, that I need as a defense counsel. I need that humility, otherwise I'm not effective. To say, I'm a foreigner here in somebody else's land. Let me try to understand the basics, the culture, the history, before I just jump to conclusions. You can't do it in line with CNN or BBC or a departure date for a former prosecutor. It requires that humility, that self, uh, that realization that we're fallible to get it right. Not a belief in prosecutorial infallibility. In fact, a belief in prosecutorial infallibility is the enemy of justice in every single way. Your Honor, that's on the 2nd of January. Ruto calling for peace. Let me play another clip with, your court, with the court's leave, dated the 27th of January 2008. And this shows Mr. Ruto visiting a hospital, seeing the victims of the violence from all tribes. And Your Honor, I would commend it to the bench for consideration. Your Honor, and in looking at this, these are some of the victims that the prosecutor alleges are victims of Mr. Ruto. Ruto so joined the worshippers for a Sunday service at AIC and Lourdes to pray for peace. From here, he proceeded to Moi Farol Hospital where victims of the post-election commissions are still nursing injuries caused by bullets and arrows. This man says he lost all his property to people he has known all his life in Eldoran. Ruto says those standing against their innocent neighbors are committing crimes and he wants the killings to stop. The people who have caused us this pain are not the ordinary people in our midst. Everybody has a democratic right to vote the way they want, but we must respect the will of the people. And therefore, I want to urge the people in this province and in our district, they should not fight the Kikuyus and the Kalenjins and the Luyas and the Kisis should not fight because they have committed no wrong among us themselves. The people we have a quarrel with and we will pursue are the crooks in Nairobi and we know them. And he is putting on notice individuals who he claims who are behind the doctoring of election results at KICC Tallinn Centre. We shall ashamed those who have put us in this mess. Because for sure we will rise up. And it doesn't matter how long it takes. We are prepared to pay the ultimate price. Because we believe in a democratic Kenya. The Lorette North Member of Parliament later distributed a hundred sacks of maize and assorted foodstuffs to displaced victims in his constituency. Your Honor, that's the voice of William Ruto. Your Honor, that's dated the 27th of January, calling for peace. And, and I was wrong, in fact, the previous video that I, show, that I showed where he was calling for peace is the 1st of January. It's the same time that uh, the Kamba Church uh, tragedy was taking place. Yet those inconvenient truths are swept under the carpet or ignored by this office of the prosecution. Your Honor, it's very difficult to deal with a lie. It's, it's very difficult to expose a light. It may sound strange, but it is. And 
what we can do is present the evidence we've got. And Your Honour has seen, even in the opening, the paucity of evidence of that nature from the prosecution. The burden of proof beyond reasonable doubt is a protection for all of us. How can a case proceed, never mind get to a conviction, based upon this inadequate and deficient investigation, this unfair prosecution? Your Honour, despite these hurdles, William Ruto has remained steadfast and desires and believes that the truth will be accepted and seen and assessed by your honours and that in the end the truth cannot be hidden indefinitely and that's the safeguard that we have in fact and that actually underpins his belief in the rule of law let's play the next clip Is much more. Can you beat them? Can you beat them? I know you refuse that legal they, they, they will. They will succeed in everything else. Intrigues and games and uh, manipulation. But, but I don't think uh, they can manufacture the truth or they can change um, uh, the foundation of justice. I think the truth will finally come out. Will it set you free, Moshimua? Absolutely. You'll be vindicated? Absolutely. I have no doubt in my mind. I think the truth will finally come out. Will it set you free, Moshimua? Absolutely. You'll be vindicated? Absolutely. I have no doubt in my mind. Your Honour, I will close my submissions with one final piece of evidence. Sometimes, Your Honour, the evidence is straight staring one in the face all along. We've debunked the nonsense that the prosecution contenders the truth regarding the policy or the plan of ethnic cleansing. And we have played the voice of William Ruto saying, this land is yours, you stay here. Whether you're from north or south or east or west, it's your land. We have debunked, we say, already in opening the contention of the prosecution that he was planning violence because the speeches you have heard before the violence and after are of William Ruto calling for peace. Your Honour, we have debunked, we say, the nonsense of anti-Kikuyu sentiment by way of his support of a Kikuyu in 2002 and the support of a Kikuyu in 2012. We have debunked, we say, the limp assertion that he has a thirst for power by his own views and manifestos and the evidence that in 2007 he supported not a Kalenjin but a Lua and a Luya. It's their front center stage for anybody to see. But Your Honor, sometimes on the margins, on the periphery, we also get to see a real glimpse of what is the truth. Always in life, because the prosecution may say, well, it doesn't bear scrutiny, withstand scrutiny. Well, these public statements were made, but he doesn't mean them. I mean, that's all they can say, because other public statements are said to have been made in front of thousands. So it can't be a secret. So one wonders how they can deal with these other public statements that are at the same time, and that are verified in audio and video by the defense, that has no burden of proof. But leaving all that aside, let's watch something where we say there's a great truth that is revealed and I'd ask to play the first section of the video hmm? and your honor will have to ca uh, listen carefully everybody will have to listen carefully um, to, to the to the uh, audio opinions have seen democracy shackled, eventually strangled, and finally buried. So Kenyans are in a state of mourning. Raila maintains that electoral commission was compelled by someone in government to announce the results, which he says were not correct, and added that ODM will not recognize the government. Democracy is expensive. 
and we are prepared to pay the ultimate price to liberate this country. The ODM flag bearer, who also met with the party's MPs elect, announced that ODM would hold another peaceful rally at Uhuru Park on Thursday this week after notifying authorities. And we therefore are going to call for mass action, countrywide, peaceful mass action, peaceful demonstration. Well, let's his listen to another segment and listen very carefully to the whisper. Let's hear who the whisper comes from. And we therefore are going to call for mass action, countrywide, peaceful mass action, peaceful demonstration. Your Honor, these videos are publicly available. We will see in the last segment who utters these words and the third video can be played. Who whispers in, in the uh, hearing of the cameraman? And Your Honor, this is dated the 31st of December 2007. Uh, so we have the video and the audio of uh, William Ruto on the 1st of January. This is the 31st of December, directly relevant, we say, to the absolutely unsupported, false and erroneous allegations that he's being made to answer by the Office of the Prosecutor of the ICC. Let that be played, please. And therefore we are going to call for mass action, countrywide, peaceful mass action, peaceful demonstration. Rana, I hope everybody saw, or otherwise I can play it again. It's very clearly William Ruto who utters the words, peaceful. Uh, he wasn't centre stage. The, it's a whisper to the leader of the ODM, Raila Odinga. It's a qualification, and it's a qualification that is very important to William Ruto regarding democracy and the rule of law. It is a whisper that we say speaks volumes. It's a whisper that we say silences this prosecution. It's a whisper that we say is deafening in its importance to this case and in giving the bench an insight into how erroneous this prosecution is. Your Honor, a lot has been said and a lot has been written about the ICC. Uh, Madam Prosecutor was not in the press conference yesterday when I said before all the journalists present that personally I am reassured that Madam Prosecutor herself and her deputy are honourable people. I, I don't question them, themselves at all. I, I don't have doubts about them in that regard. But for whatever reason, there are the most fundamental systemic failings in the Office of the Prosecution. This case got off to the wrong start based upon the wrong evidence and a wrong focus and everything ever since has been an attempt to squeeze in facts that don't fit in relation to an ultimate imperative to get Mr. Ruto. Your Honor, I will call upon the prosecutor herself and her deputy to consider these defense submissions Tough though they have been in part, strident though the criticisms by force have been, to do the honourable thing, to review their evidence, to question the motives and motivations of their witnesses, to come to the conclusion that witnesses have deceived them, that their case is wrong, and to drop the case against William Ruto without further agony and pain. That is a difficult decision, Your Honour, but it's the honourable action for the prosecutor to do. Your Honour, if that is not done, we are confident that this bench, in the discharge of your own responsibilities, will terminate this case at the appropriate point, or if not, 
enter not guilty verdicts. Your Honour, I will play once again because I understand some people missed it, the last video clip and then I will sit down. And as I said, it's a video clip that speaks volumes. I'm grateful and those are my submissions. If that video can be played, I'm grateful. And therefore we are going to call for mass action, countrywide, peaceful mass action, peaceful demonstration. Thank you, Mr. Ken, as you noticed, I did not stop you, and you um, made your submissions as amply as you hoped to do, I hope. Um, uh, prosecutor, how are we looking tomorrow in, or not just tomorrow, when are we expecting the first witness on the stand? Your Honour, uh, as mentioned in the um, status conference yesterday, the first witness is travelling as we speak. We expect her to arrive in The Hague on Thursday and we expect to be able to begin immediately after the long weekend on Tuesday. All right, thank you. We are you, therefore but free to carry on tomorrow if, if that is... That is what, what I wanted to establish. Thank you. May I, uh, before I sit down, ask if perhaps your honours are not minded to allow my learned friend for accused number two to begin today, whether your honours would allow me approximately five to ten minutes just to respond to certain misstatements that I believe my learned friend has made when he portrays what the prosecution's case is. Um, it will be better to do that after the conclusion As the of the second defendant's As the counsel pleasure. in case you have something else you also want to I, I just thought we might uh, react to use the last 15 minutes uh, but it, uh, we don't, we, it would be better for you to if you need to do that kind of thing to do it all at once if As, we need to please. get into it even if we have to adjourn earlier than is anticipated today Your Honour, can I just say that my London friend has brought this case We'll have the whole of a trial to prove that I'm wrong. It's not form that uh, the prosecution is given effectively uh, under guise of clarifications, a second opening speech. And if they do, Your Honours, I will have to uh, make submissions that I have further rights to respond. And Your Honour, that will be a merry-go-round that will never get off. Your Honour, there's opening speeches. I didn't accept what the prosecution said, and I responded. Uh, Your Honours, the prosecution can prove me wrong in the course of a trial. But Your Honour, the facts speak for themselves. The silence that I mentioned regarding the paucity of their evidence is patently obvious and I would vigorously say that it is procedurally improper and unfair for the prosecution to get a second bite at the cherry. Uh, Mr. Khan, he, he is not doing... One second. Mr. Khan, I was about to say that um, that's a matter on which we can take submissions at the appropriate time. Uh, the prosecution hasn't been given the opportunity to do so immediately. Uh, the Chamber may or may not grant that wish um, at the end of Mr. Uh, Keegan Katwa's submissions we will return to the question on whether it is procedurally appropriate for the prosecutor to reply to opening statements. Yes, but yes. in the meantime, um, we will leave it there for now and we will take the matter up at the end of Mr. Keegan Katwa's opening remarks. Um, now, it's 15 minutes to time. Um, I suppose it might be more uh, prudent for you to start your remarks tomorrow since the prosecutor has indicated that 
we're not anticipating any witness tomorrow in any event. And I don't expect that your submissions will take all day tomorrow. I know Mr. Khan almost did, but fair enough. President, I would very much appreciate to start tomorrow. All right. Why don't we then adjourn for today and then um, reconvene tomorrow at 9.30. All rise, veuillez vous lever.